Hey, drop it now. Put it down. Put it down. Put it down. Stop. End quote. Officer Chekis further stated he drew his gun from the holster because he believed the suspects had metal objects which could, which could inflict death or serious bodily injury to the victim. Initially, none of the suspects acknowledged his commands, but as he got closer, one of the suspects turned and dropped his weapon and ran. And, uh, and Officer Chekis heard a metallic sound when the suspect dropped his weapon. Officer Chekis stated that the other suspects continued to advance towards the victim as the victim walked with his hands up in the air. This suspect was the same suspect he had seen earlier strike the victim with what appeared to be a long metallic object. The officer continued to run towards the suspect to protect the victim. As the suspect advanced on the victim, Officer Chekis said he saw the suspect raise the pipe in close proximity to the victim and he made the decision to use deadly force to protect the victim and fired his weapon. Officer Chekis was asked why did he not use his taser on the suspect. Officer Chekis communicated that he did not believe that the taser would have been effective as he was reacting to the immediacy of the threat before him. Officer Wenniger was also interviewed and he stated as he came out and noticed the disturbance on the southeast of, the, uh, southeast of road, road Home Shelter, he heard a loud pop as he compared to a long fluorescent light bulb popping. He stated that he saw a long, quote, weapon, end quote. He held the weapon, uh, uh, held the weapons uh, above the suspect's head, and he thought that it was a sword or a pipe. He thought, oh my gosh, they are attacking this guy. He saw the victim in a defensive position and was being attacked, and he could see the suspect's long object was reflecting light, that he could see that it was hard metal. Officer Weiniger ran towards the suspect yelling stop, stop, and stated to the investigators that he was very concerned that one of the sus suspects may hit the victim and believed that one blows, uh, quote, one blows just going to kill the victim, end quote. He also stated that he heard a metal sound as one of the suspects dragged the metal objects on the ground and pursued the victim. Officer Weiniger noted that as he ran towards the suspect, that one of the suspects turned and dropped his body to the ground and his attention was focused upon the suspect still advancing on the victim. Officer Weiniger stated that he saw the suspect was perpendicular to him and was intent on going after the victim and that the victim appeared helpless as he walked backwards from the suspect. He continued to yell commands, police, stop, drop it, and the suspect did not acknowledge his commands. He believed that the suspect was going to kill the victim as he saw the suspect moving. Quote, uh, quote, his hands from down and started to bring, uh, started to bring up the pipe up, end quote. He made the decision to shoot and fired his weapon because he knew that he had to act swiftly because he was worried about the victim's life, quote, at that second, end quote. The Salt Lake County DA's office also presented the tapes for preliminary review with the FBI to make sure there were no issues as to any federal criminal uh, as to any federal criminal or civil rights issue. We were told that they would decline to open any investigation based on their review with us of the shooting. The Salt Lake County's office also listed the input of Martinelli and Associates, an independent use of force experts. Their review of the uh, case file reached the same conclusion as well, that the use of force by the two police officers was justified. The Salt Lake County uh, DA's office review of the totality of the information led to the same conclusion that officers reasonably perceived, based upon their observations, commands, and the events unfolding before them, that Cam's life was at risk of death or serious bodily injury, that the suspects failed to comply uh, to their lawful commands and continued to pursue the victim, and to the officers appeared to be preparing to strike the victim that could reasonably be understood to inflict death or serious bodily injury. Finally, to prevent Cam's apparent risk of death or serious bodily injury, both officers reasonably believed that their use of deadly force was necessary. Therefore, the use of deadly force by officers Chekis and Vonnegar was justified under the current state statutes and justified and would be a legal defense to any criminal prosecution. Based upon this finding, this office declines any further review of any criminal charges against the two officers and considers the matter closed at this time. I'd be happy to take any questions at this time. Yes. So did you guys recover the weapons that the two attackers were using? You, you yeah. were saying what appeared to be. Yes. What exactly and and if you have, if you see the packet, we have some of the photographs of those in the back there. Uh, that should be attached in the back. There. So what were they? Uh, there were two uh, long uh, pipes. One was a thick metallic pole. The other one was what was a metal uh, broom handle. 
talk about more about the uh, video that's out there and the decision not to release it this time? Yeah, so as we mentioned, this is a this is a interesting case in the sense that this is a case that has many different aspects that typically we don't see. One, it, impo it involves a juvenile. And as such, we have uh, 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 restrictions and obligations that are uh, uh, critical with that. And, and since this is also a, a, a evidence of a, a criminal prosecution, it is material evidence, and, uh, and we decline to release that at this time. And so until we get further clarity, uh, we have to go back to what, 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 how we look at uh, evidence. And so in this case, uh, any other evidence, we would not be releasing that prior to uh, presentment in, uh, in, uh, in the trial. Can you say how much did the video weigh in your decision? Well, the video was important. Uh, it uh, certainly gave, and then look, one of the things that I've said always about body cam footage, a body cam footage does not always uh, uh, capture what an officer sees, what an officer experiences, or what an officer is feeling at that time. It is a tool that is available to us, and sometimes in an OICI, it may have a very limited uh, application, and when it's appropriate, we release that as quickly as we get done with the investigation. But as we embrace these new technologies, we have to recognize that they're also capturing, ostensibly, uh, material evidence of potential criminal wrongdoing. And as such, we have an obligation to make sure that that uh, evidence is preserved for that purpose, where if a subsequent criminal prosecution is going to occur, and it, as in this case, as I've su uh, suggested, that it, it, it is. So, so, so in regards this case, to the video, uh, can you tell us what is on the video as far as are you seeing very clearly what you're explaining there? So what I can say to you, the, the video uh, uh, helps us certainly corroborate aspects of what we mentioned here in the OICI. Uh, without going into details about specific conduct, uh, we can say that it was helpful to us. We used it. We used it in conjunction as one piece of evidence in the totality of information that was presented to us from both from witnesses as well as what was on the video itself. What was the biggest challenge though in putting this decision together? Because this one's going to take a lot longer than other officer ball shooting reviews. You had the video, you had the witnesses. But there, there, were, there were a couple of things. One, as I've explained, it was just one of those anomalies that we had multiple officer ball shootings before the DA's office. In fact, I had six uh, that, we, that were there. And so this one just fell in the queue of those other ones that we had. So we had to get those ones done. So that took a while for us to finish those out. And then this one uh, itself, although it, in some respects it, it, uh, it's like any other officer ball shooting, it was kind of uh, uh, unique in the sense that it's the case of first impression that involves a juvenile. Second of all, it has video evidence uh, and material evidence uh, that some of the other ones did not always have. Uh, and of course, we want it to be very thorough. It's understandable why there's an interest in, uh, from the community. We want to do a thorough job. And as I indicated, we contacted the FBI, had that uh, discussion with them. We brought in an outside uh, uh, investigator and an expert, had to gather all the information, finish all the interviews, send the materials to them to have them be able to review it, bring it back. So it was a very thorough investigation, and we wanted to do a, a good job with that. So that's why there was some additional uh, uh, time that was taken in this matter. I just understand, so are you filing charges against the you know, man, so what kind of charges? Okay, so uh, uh, let me just say, as I stated, that uh, this involves a juvenile, and we have filed a petition with the juvenile court this morning, and uh, beyond that, I'm not at liberty to speak, so to do unless the juvenile court releases uh, that information, uh, which you guys can ask for through your normal course. But assuming it's related to the attack that was taking place, correct? Right? Again, I am limited to what I can say about juvenile matters, and, and all I can say is a petition has been filed this morning, and so uh, and when that information is released, then that will become clear. And so sum up your thoughts uh, in regards to what you just read in the investigation and everything. Why do you believe that these officers are justified in what they did? Well, uh, because these officers perceived a, a, a situation that uh, allegedly involved some criminal activity. They saw a person who was being attacked. 
they, based on the totality of the information that they were receiving at that time and observing, they believed that there were metal objects that were being used in a potential uh, harm that was going to happen to this victim. They, they engaged in uh, direct commands to, uh, to uh, try to alleviate the situation. Uh, they gave pursuit. They, the, uh, it is alleged the attackers continued to pursue the victim. They uh, reasonably believed of the information that was available to them that the death or serious bodily injury could happen. And as they reacted to that dynamic situation, uh, decided to exercise uh, uh, lethal force, uh, which, which under our state statute, under those circumstances, justifies the use of such force. What's the status of the two officers at this point? Um, my understanding was they, they have been on administrative leave, but this is something that the Chief Brown uh, or Salt Lake City Police Department would be more uh, in a position to answer. But uh, typically, it's a normal procedure to put people on administrative leave when these investigations are going, but that they would be in the better position to answer that. Did, the, uh, did KM have any weapon? The juvenile says that, that KM had a knife. And Again, uh, I, I, uh, what I can tell you, based on our investigation, uh, we had uh, no proof that indicated that uh, there was any uh, weapon uh, based on the information that we received as to the victim. What kind of injuries did he, did he get that night, the victim? Uh, the, uh, the victim uh, uh, certainly uh, took uh, several blows, which he communicated to investigators, uh, uh, strikes to his uh, torso and arm and legs, I believe. Did he have to go to the hospital or anything? Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not talking about any medical information about him. Uh, yes. I may have this, but uh, how many shots were fired and how many hit the, the suspect? Certainly, uh, there were there were uh, there were three uh, altogether. Four shots were fired. I believe there were uh, four four uh, hits that uh, occurred. Two from each officer, or do you know? Uh, there was three and one. Three, three officers two shots fired from one officer and one shot fired from one officer. How far away were the officers? when they discharged the weapon from the juvenile? It is, that was a dynamic situation, but the distance would be somewhere between 10 to 15 feet. Uh, it's estimated by the experts that probably around 15 feet. So the officer didn't feel necessarily threatened by the individual coming at them, the suspect. It was to protect the <coughs> That's correct. Under, under our state statute, one of the prongs for the use of justified force is when you come in aid to a third party who you think might be subject to imminent uh, uh, serious, uh, serious bodily injury or death. Mr. Gill, was there any other way for um, a different type of action to, from the police officers to be have been done besides Well, you know, it's, I think that, that that would require really a speculation, uh, a speculation on this. But what our analysis was, and our responsibility here was, to see that the force that was used, was that force justified under the statute based on the facts that were available to the officers as the situation unfolded. So uh, I think it would be unfair for me to speculate to what uh, uh, other things those officers could have done because from their perspective, they were in a dynamic situation. They believed that they used the appropriate force that was necessary to address the threat that was, they were perceiving at the time before them. At what point does an officer switch from a taser to an actual firearm? Can you tell us what, what how that works. Well, uh, you know, I, I can certainly answer in the context of what uh, uh, what uh, was in this fact, and I can maybe defer to my colleague uh, Sheriff Winder from in terms of their training. But uh, uh, certainly, that uh, uh, there was distance, there was a concern. They were asked that question. Uh, they, uh, one of the officers indicated that as the uh, parties were moving, there was a light pole that was in the middle. He didn't feel that that was going to uh, uh, impact. There was a uh, bulky clothing. There was some distance away from the officer to the to the suspect. And the tasers are really most effective when you're in close proximity. And there's a certain peak when you fire the taser. The prongs have a tendency to spread out. And at that point, uh, he absolutely believed that the, the proximity of the suspect to the victim was close enough that he needed a far more certain means by which to be able to uh, alleviate that threat. But I'll turn the time to my colleague about the taser use. I don't know if I, if I explained that or not. In regards to, obviously, this shooting brought about a lot of outrage within the community. Many people were saying that this was unjustified, the officers should have done this. Is there anything you can say to the public out there who believes that officers overreacting? Well, it, look, um, I, I have always been very, very forthright about from the Salt Lake County DA's office. I deeply and absolutely believe 
that our citizens and our community has every right to ask for information, to hold our public institutions accountable, and to have that information be shared with them in an open and transparent way. And so uh, there are a lot of concerns around uh, nationally that, that we all understand. And I don't think we should be uh, frightened from those. We should embrace that because that's what is part of a healthy democracy. That is what is accountability of public institutions and public uh, uh, officers. So uh, uh, can we collectively uh, continue to improve? Absolutely. Uh, and is that appropriate for our community to ask that of our public institution? Absolutely. And that's something that I absolutely believe in and support. And the last six years as, as the Salt Lake County DA, we have uh, uh, partners with our uh, partner, with collaboration with our local law enforcement partners in bringing more transparency and accountability. We're the first district attorney's office that actually publishes all of its analysis. You can go on our website, this will be on there. You can see what facts are available to us, what the law requires us to do, how we apply those facts and reach the analysis and conclusion because that is uh, absolutely appropriate and every citizen has that right and we support that uh, interest from our community. But we all have to work through it, and there are things that we can always be working on and improving to build that uh, trust and to build that transparency. But well, this isn't about taking sides. No, I don't. It, look, uh, it, look. As the Salt Lake County DA, my job is to take the facts, apply them within the construct of the law, and reach a conclusion. And and uh, if it's about taking sides, to half of the population I'll be a genius, and to the other half of the population I'll be a cat. Right? It's not about trying to be uh, making a popular decision. It's about committing yourself to a process a, a, that is objective, that is fair, that is accountable, and call it like you see it. Because it is the integrity of the process that will engender the trust. It's not about choosing sides. This is not about choosing sides. It's about building that trust and trusting in the process. You mentioned you went to a private attorney, I guess, to be a force expert. Um, how often do you do that, and why did you take that? Uh, you, you, you know, we do it sometimes because uh, we, we want to get sometimes a, as much information from use of force experts as we can. And, uh, and, and this was, and, you know, to, to sort of echo the earlier point, whenever we have a community interest, I think it is incumbent upon us as public institutions to do the very best that we can. That's why we reached out to the FBI. That is why we reached out to outside experts. This is why we gather the information and bring uh, the totality of that information back because that's what I think a good process looks like. And, it is, uh, and where appropriate, we should search out as much information as we can to inform the decisions so we can make the very best decision in an open and transparent way. Have you informed the family of uh, the young man Shot. Okay. I, I have not. We reached out earlier. Uh, we had made ourselves available uh, early in the process. There were some attempts to make contact, but uh, so, uh, since then there has been no, no contact with our office. So we, we, we have not had the opportunity to speak to them. Do you have anything in regards to the family saying this was completely unjustified? The, the, the I'm sorry, say that again. Do you have anything to say to the family that was the 17 year old in regards to them saying that this was? Unjustified. He says his story is, is that he did not, you know, come at anybody. He did not raise his. Again, all I can do. First of all, let's let's be very clear. Uh, Any time there is a use of lethal force, that is unfortunate in our community and in our society. That we, things have gotten to the point where we have to use that force. That is not something that anybody, a law enforcement or anybody, looks forward to doing. As to as to the, to the family, I, of course, anybody, any citizen in this country, when is harmed, of course, our heart goes out to them because of the injuries that they may suffer. But our job, the DA's job here, is to look at the facts, gather the evidence, look at the statutes, and try to make the best decision based on the information that's presented to us, and call it like we see it, and that's exactly what we're doing. Again, uh, since it's a juvenile, I, I will refrain from making any comments as to that individual. So has the juvenile been arrested again because you're filing the petition? Uh, again, we filed the petition this morning, uh, uh, and so I, I don't know what the status is going to be in that. Uh, uh, and so at this point, we, all I can say is we just filed the petition. Anybody else? Was there ever any explanation as to why that victim was being attacked? As we stated earlier in our uh, recitation of the facts, that uh, the, the, the victim went to the area to find food and to purchase drugs. And he was there to purchase a, a joint for a dollar ten. So the second 
suspect? Has he been charged? Uh, no, uh, we went through again the analysis uh, through our uh, evidence that we had, and uh, the uh, the second suspect complied uh, through the response that, that the officers were giving uh, based on the evidence that we were able to gather uh, up to this stage. We did not feel that we had a sufficient basis uh, to uh, file charges, and at this time we declined to do so. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much.